Okay, hello everyone again. My name's Capricia. Um, I'm a second year medical student here at Wayne. I see you guys are fine in the comments. So yeah, good afternoon. Can't believe it's two o'clock already. But I'm also one of the presidents currently for Black Medical Association. And so I have some other um, members here that are also part of the Black Medical Association. And so I'll just go ahead and start introducing myself and then we'll introduce ourselves to you guys. And then if you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and either put them in the chat or you can even unmute yourself and ask the question, or we'll just go ahead and start with some kind of pre-decided questions. So like I said, I'm a second year medical student. So I grew up my childhood mostly in the Chicago area. And then when I was a teenager, I moved to the Atlanta area. I went to undergrad at the Ohio State University. I took a year off before starting medical school. And so one of the reasons that I really liked Wayne was its commitment to service and how they, they require students, especially first and second year students to complete an extra service learning component to the curriculum. And so that was something that was really important to me because that's something that I wanted to do anyways during my uh, medical education. And so the fact that it was required for students um, really meant that they made the time, they took the time out of our curriculum to allow students to do that. And so some of the involvements that I take part in, um, like I said, I'm one of the presidents for the Black Medical Association. And then I'm also an MD ambassador. And so usually if we were in person doing interviews, I'd be the one that's giving the tours and kind of talking with the interviewees during their lunch time. And I'm also taking part in the community engagement electives. And so that's just an additional service learning component to our curriculum. I'm one of the coordinators for the medicine the internal medicine and pediatrics interest group. Um, also, I'm one of the coordinators for the STI HIV education and prevention student organization. And then I'm also on the social justice and medical education um, committee here at the university. And so I'll go ahead and just hand it off to Ken Dario or David, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. I can start. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Kendall Johnson. I'm a first year medical student here at Wayne. Um, so I'm actually from California. Um, so I moved out to Detroit the first time for the first time in August. Um, so it's been a really, really interesting experience. Um, I went to Loyola Marymount University, which is in Los Angeles, California. Um, for undergrad, um, after I graduated in 2017, um, I took a couple years off. I did a post back program. Um, and then at that point I applied in um, the fall of 2019. Um, so I chose Wayne because um, I liked the idea of getting involved in clinical skills from the beginning um, and, and getting that practice um, in terms of how to be a doctor, um, that hands-on experience. Um, and so we really just started doing um, in-person um, sort of interactions that way. And I think it's been really cool and it's been a really, interesting way to integrate my learning in terms of what I'm what I'm learning um, in terms of lectures and what I'm learning in terms of like actual doctoring skills. Um, so the things I'm involved in right now, BMA, um, I'm also kind of exploring other things right now, um, but with the pandemic and everything, it's been a really interesting way to get, um, to get uh, affiliated or introduced to some of the new organizations or some of the organizations on campus. So I'm still kind of getting a feel of what I want to be involved in, but right now that's where I'm at. I can go next. Hi, I'm Ariel. I'm a second year med student here. Um, I'm actually from Canada. Um, I did grad school in uh, Cleveland. I went to Case Western. Um, but I did undergrad and more grad school in Canada before moving to America. Um, why Wayne? Um, actually, so as a Canadian student, um, one of the big things about med school for me was finances. And Wayne is one of the only schools that doesn't require you to pay all the money up front as an international student. So that's why Wayne for me. But um, there are also other great things about the school. Um, in terms of things that I'm involved in, um, I am a BMA um, executive member, uh, board member. Um, I'm also uh, one of the co-presidents of the ENT interest group. Um, I also run a ENT um, specific uh, clinic, um, as well as the um, um, CHIPS breakfast program, um, which is on hiatus at the moment due to the pandemic situation. 
Um, I'm also involved in a lot of research on campus uh, through the um, neuro, um, neuroscience and neurology departments uh, through DMC. Um, so that's pretty much it for me. And David can go ahead now. Um, all right, sounds good. Um, I'm David. I'm also a second year medical student here. Um, I'm also a Canadian um, as well. And um, I'm from, well, I did my undergrad in Canada, moved here, uh, well, last year. Um, I went to University of Calgary and I majored in biological science. Uh, I chose Wayne for, well, one of the reasons that Ariel highlighted, highlighted too for finances for sure, because um, having to put all that money in escrow like right away as a Canadian is not ideal. Um, <laughs> and also, I also really like the population that we serve here because Detroit is a predominantly black city. Um, and I really like being able to serve that population because that's who I want to work with when I practice um, long term. And things involved in at Wayne, I'm also on the BMAE board. I'm also one of the coordinators for the sports medicine interest group. And I'm one of the SILs, so like supplemental instructional leaders for um, our M1s here too. So you'll probably see us, a lot of us here a lot, um, if you guys do decide to come here. Yeah, thank you guys. So if you, like I just said, for some of you that are um, just joining us, we just briefly introduced ourselves. But as we're going through the conversation, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and put them in the chat. But I guess we can get started with um, kind of like what does our organization do, the Black Medical Association? And so mostly, so we're, we're really, we're part of the Student National Medical Association, which is a national organization. And so we are a professional organization and we're just, we are the local chapter at Wayne State University. And so we do partake in service. Um, right now we're, we're piloting a telehealth blood pressure screening, and then we're gonna be giving out blood pressure cups to the community in the next few weeks. And so um, that's one of the service opportunities that we offer to not only our members, but also other students. And then if you guys wanna go ahead and say anything else that you know BMA has done in the past year or what our organization really stands for. I guess, Piggybacking off of what Capricia said, um, we as like the BMA, we try to one, it's it's kind of like a mentorship program in a way too, because we do our best to try to reach out um, to the incoming class all the time, and we pair you guys with people who are second, third years, and we also kind of try to get a gauge of what you're interested in and try to pair you with positions as well in that field. Um, and then we're pretty involved in the community, so we put together a variety of events for youth. Um, and we do like a lot of community service things like Capricia said. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to go back to your point that you made originally about how Detroit is a predominantly black city. And so I think that's really a good opportunity for us as the Black Medical Association to serve as that representation for younger students that are in high school or community members or even younger students that are in elementary school. Like we have this reach out to youth program that we're actually going to have this month. And so usually it's in person, but this year it's virtual. And so we invite students from the community to campus and we kind of walk them through what it looks like um, to be in the sciences or to be in medicine. We have a lot of hands-on activities for them and a lot of educational workshops for them. And then also for their parents to come to campus and kind of get engaged into the field of medicine and into science in general. And so I think it's a really good opportunity that we're here in Detroit, in the city, and there's so many opportunities for us to really serve our community and serve people that look like us. I don't know, am I forgetting anything else, guys? Okay. Um, so I'm reading some of the questions that you guys had submitted beforehand. And so one of the questions is, okay, so what steps do you think prospective students can take to learn more about the diversity at institutions they are interested in? More often, many institutions place an emphasis on diversity without much actual initiative. And so that is a really good question. I'm trying to read it. 
Okay, so one thing that I think would be um, good for you guys, you're in the perfect opportunity because you guys are pre-med, so hopefully um, whether you're applying this cycle or in future cycles, um, you'll get an interview and you can have the opportunity to kind of ask the people that are interviewing what initiatives are Wayne currently, is Wayne State Administration currently, um, what changes are they implementing, you know, in the current times. But something that you guys can do to kind of get a feel of the sense of community or the sense of diversity here at Wayne is to look it up. So we do have an Office of Diversity and Inclusion. And so they do have some, they do have some various, we do have various student organizations on their website. Sorry, I'm just reading the questions. They do have various student organizations on their website. And so there's, um, there's us, DMA, there's LMSA, there's LGBT pe people in medicine, um, there's IMSA. And so there's various diverse groups that do a lot of community engagement, a lot of student engagement throughout the year. And so that's something good to look out and kind of get involved in once you're a student. And then um, I think there's always room for improvement, especially with universities and with administrators. And so something that something that I think is beneficial about coming to Wayne is that um, the students, like we really can make this, this experience for us what we want it to be. And so if, if we come here and we're like, you know what, I don't really like the climate, I don't like the education I'm receiving, we really have the opportunity to say, you know what, well, I'm gonna make a change. I'm gonna do what I think I should do. And I'm gonna make sure that my peers have the same opportunities that I have. And so I think that's been a big benefit for myself, especially being a part of BMA, is kind of assessing um, assessing everything within our curriculum, everything within our, you know, post, post, what are they, didactic years, so the, the third and fourth years, like, what can we do once we're, we're on the wards, once we're in rotations, like, what, what can we do to enhance the diversity climate there in terms of education and also in terms of representation, and so there are a few things that us students are trying to implement within the school and within the administration to kind of enhance is Wayne's um, diversity aspect because I'm sure you guys know Wayne has been here for, you know, I think it's 150 years. And so they have this saying of urban excellence. And so us students, we really, when you come here, you're like, I really wanna have an urban excellent education and experience, especially being in Detroit. And so I think a good opportunity is that as students, you can really make it all that you want it to be. Piggybacking on, on what she's saying too, I think um, in terms of things that you can do, I think the, if you want like the realist answer, you got to talk to other medical students because like the schools are going to give you like their, like, you know what I mean? Politically correct answer for initiatives that they're taking. Um, but if you want like the realist answer, you got to come to events like this where we're going to be honest with you guys from the jump. We're not going to, I'm not going to, we're not going to sugarcoat it. Um, so like, I think you guys are already taking a step in the sense that you're already here and you're trying to, you're trying to learn. So that's another, that's another thing to consider. Okay, um, I'll go ahead and ask a second question. So when, when does Wayne State University first year medical students start studying for U.S. MLE step one exam. Kendra, have you started studying for that? Um, not formally. Um, to answer that question a little bit, um, informally, yes. Um, there will be um, a good proportion of your classmates, if you're coming in, that will be studying from the jump. Um, and that may not be for everybody. Um, for me personally, it studying for a step right now just means looking at board questions and and getting a little bit of light practice in and looking at first aid as, as a resource. Um, and then I think the hardcore studying really starts next year for me. Um, but I think it, it doesn't hurt to, to look at the kinds of questions that they'll ask you and to kind of integrate that into the material that you're learning. But um, I, I'm not starting any hardcore step preparation just yet, so. To piggyback off of what Kendall just said, um, one of the things that you guys all have to be aware of is that step is changing to pass fail. So um, for your class, the scoring of it is not gonna be as heavily weighted in your application for residency as it was um, pre previously. 
So your goal as a first year medical student is kind of just to figure out what works for you, how you learn best and like just succeed in medical school. And Wayne will do a very good job of prepping you over the course of the two years to take this exam. As long as you continuously keep up with your coursework, you don't need to really be overly concerned about it until, you know, closer to dedicated. It's like we're kind of myself, Capricia, and David are right now where we're coming up to dedicated and we're like, okay, now we need to start signing for steps. So first year, you should just be worrying about figuring out how to study in medical school because it's a lot. Yeah, thank you guys. Bobby, did you have your hand raised? Yeah, I do. Uh, thanks for calling on me. You know, I'm just wondering from your guys' perspective, um, being involved with a national professional organization, how can I prepare to become a more equitable physician? And I'm curious to hear more about how the school uh, addresses black health disparities in medicine. Can you elaborate on what you mean by a more equitable physician? Yeah, so I want to become a physician that's able to take into account patients, um, you know, diverse uh, lived experiences and social context, which was really important when I was collecting patient histories at Suchi Mobile Clinic. And I want to know how I can be best culturally responsive. Um, and a uh, long story short, so. Uh, I'm not very well educated. To, um, I think I can be more educated on the health issues and ra uh, racial disparities for your or the black communities in this country. And I'm just wondering, uh, from your guys' perspectives as board members of the Black Medical Association, what would you recommend for me? That's a good question. Um, I would say, first, first and foremost, I guess I would say, if you do choose to come to Wayne, um, you are gonna be exposed to the patient population here, which you're gonna see a lot of African-Americans who, um, you know, like they have their health issues and you can see that tangibly. You can see the disparity between, you know, like other ethnicities and, and like black people or minorities. Um, so that's one, you get the hands-on experience if you do come here. Other things that you can do is kind of just be, do your best at least to keep up with like even research and literature that's coming out talking about those disparities and just reading up and educating yourself. Um, I think educating yourself and like having that, you know, like you want to learn that on your own um, is, a, is a huge step because you're already aware of some of those biases that you may have. Um, and I guess you asking that question is already a good, it's a good sign. Yeah. I would just agree with David. I think education is really important for people that want to be aware and helpful. It starts with educating yourself, recognizing your own biases and how you can change those. And so um, that's that's something that you can do. And then, like you also said, once you get here to Lane, there are a lot of opportunities for education and then also a lot of opportunities to work within the community. And we have we have various various communities that have been marginalized and minoritized and so there really is that hands-on experience that you can combine with your education during your time here at Wayne. Okay so um, so there were a few questions in the chat so just to briefly answer that how we reach out to you to be different this year so David kind of answered that about how it's usually in person but this year it'll be virtual so We'll be doing all of the, the things we would be doing in person, like the hands-on experience. We'll kind of be working with the kids on these hands-on experience over Zoom. And um, also for the first 200 kids that signed up for the event, we're mailing out like a doctor's kit to them, like a doctor's preparation kit to them. And so they'll actually have a little bit of materials to where they can work with hands-on as we're showing them stuff and kind of getting them ready to be in the sciences or in healthcare. So that's something um, that'll be different this year. Okay, so we do have another question. So how are the race relations at the school? Can you be specific?
Okay, basically what William said. Okay, so William says, do you personally feel the campus culture of Wayne State University School of Medicine is inclusive and supportive of students of color outside of BMA? So I think in general, in terms of support for its students, there's a lot of work that the school can do, but they have been trying a lot. And so we do have class counselors. There's one class counselor per, um, per like grade level. And so you can work with your class counselor if you kind of need to take the day off, if you need to push your exam back, or if you've had some, um, some personal feelings or some personal situations that have happened in your life, you can work with your class counselor on that issue. And then, is Wayne State University School of Medicine inclusive and supportive of with students of color outside of BMA? Let's say they're really trying to, and they've gotten a lot better over the past 12 months that we have been here, which is very good. And so I think something that schools have struggled with, not just Wayne, but I think just schools and universities across the country have struggled with, especially these past few months with the climate that's been going on, and especially with the political climate that's been going on currently. I think many universities have struggled. And so um, I think Wayne is, is trying their hardest to be reactive and to hear the students out and kind of make those necessary changes. And so, um, so us, the Black Medical Association, and then the Inclu Inclusion um, Institute, or the, one of the external student Senate committees, so Institutional Justice and Inclusion External Senate Committee, and then also the Learning Communities, we just put on a racism and medicine summit and then also a diversity week. And so where we held these educational webinars throughout the week. And so the school was really supportive to us with that initiative. And so we met with the deans like once a month and we kind of told them about it and we're like, this is what we want to do for our students. Can you support us? Can you um, basically just support us and encourage us throughout the school and like throughout the hospitals? And they're like, yes, whatever you guys need we can do. And then um, they've also been trying to implement into our co-curricular component of our curriculum. They've been trying to implement more education on racism and healthcare. And so those are positive changes that Wayne has been making. And then also in terms of financially supporting students of color is something that they're trying to change and improve on currently. So I would say in short, I do think that the school has been moving towards being more inclusive and supportive of students of color. Is it anything else to add? Um, in addition to that, do you also feel that way with your peers who are not students of color? I would say for the most part, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Even if, um, if you, you know, sometimes the, your peers might not be as um, aware. And I think generally the climate here is that most students are still tr are trying to learn and get better. So even if it's not readily apparent, it's they're they're not coming from a bad place, essentially. So in that sense, I would say yes, for sure. There, there's it, you get that support from your peers for the most part. I have a question. Has the medical school started offering business courses for the doctors? Uh, specifically with this past pandemic, um, the medical industry was hit, especially when it came to supply chain and things like that. So has the school offered any certificates or anything to help make sure doctors know the bids behind the medicine? Um, from my understanding, there is nothing of that sort yet, um, but I do know there are some students who do the MBA program while they're in um, the MD program as well. I'm not really sure how that works. David, you know somebody that, that's doing that. Can you like, what is, what is he doing with that? <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, first of all, I think that's a good point. I think that is a cool program that I think could be potentially implemented in the future. Um, but I think they do allow you space in terms of taking like a year or I think sometimes two, maybe a year um, to do like a master's program if that's what you're interested in. Because um, I have a friend who's doing that and he's finishing that up right now. Um, but no, I don't think there's a formal, there's no formal MD, MBA program yet at Wayne that I know of. 
Yeah, I do think if that's if you want to pursue the MB, um, they do support you taking a year off or however long it takes you to complete that because they do the same for the Masters of Public Health. And so you can come in and let them know that that's something you want to do. And then you would just have to apply to the master's program after you matriculate and then you work with administration to figure out when you would like to take a gap in your schedule to complete that um, MBA if that's something that you want to do. Okay, next question is, I was wondering if you all could speak on the transition you had either from your gap years or undergrad to Wayne. What supportive services have you used at Wayne what has been your experience balancing academic and community service projects? I can start on that one. Um, I guess since I had the most recent transition, but um, I, I, that was something that I was definitely nervous about. Um, when I finished my post -bac program, that was December of 2018, um, and I applied in the fall of 2019. So it was at least a year since I had been involved in in academics and having to study for myself and and things of that nature um, so that was something i was nervous about but um, we started in july and from the start um, not only were like you know students in the years ahead of us offering us resources and offering us support which has been really great especially with wayne but um, the faculty has been offering support um, i think that it's called um, ALS, I can't remember what, what it stands for, but essentially it's it's offering um, resources for students who are starting. Um, and it's really integrated into the, the curriculum um, in terms of like um, offering review sessions and things like that. Um, things to help make sure that you're on top of your studies and that should you need help um, learning about things or, or if there are topics that you're confused about, providing that extra little bit of support um, in terms of um, academics and things like that. So. I, I was nervous about it, but it, it was a lot easier of a transition than I thought it would be. And, and Wayne has a lot of resources to offer students um, to make sure that they're not falling behind and to kind of bridge that gap from when you were last doing like hardcore academics. I can also like speak on that a little bit. Um, the transition I think is, First, med school is a lot. It's a lot of work, regardless. Um, that's one. So we, you have to kind of just like go in knowing that this is going to be like a different, it's kind of a different race because it's a little, it's a lot. Um, but one thing I, I, I found that because I came like I, I came into medical school straight from undergrad and I didn't take a year in between. I didn't take any gaps. Um, I think that kind of lends lends me to a little bit like more burnout than my colleagues who like took some time off. Who, who may have taken some time off after undergrad or taken a year or whatever, because like I found that um, never like have never having never taken a break, you're kind of just like in school all the time, um, which can be hard because our curriculum is in a way that it doesn't really build in that many breaks as well. Um, so I think like you guys should just be aware of that, that like when you do start, um, try to make sure you're in a good headspace and like it's, it's going to be a lot. Um, Cause that's something I, I still like did well and everything, but that's something I, I wish I had known that like, okay, you guys, you, you need to make sure that you're like mentally in a good, good place. Cause it's a pretty much four years of continuous school. To leapfrog off of that, I'm someone that came off of taking off and on a gap decade. So um, for me, it was very jarring to start medical school cause it has, it's nothing like anything I had ever done before and I had gotten very used to having my own time and uh, making my own schedule and it's it's not at all this so <laughs> um, but I would say that one of the biggest helps for me has ha been having um, our class um, academic advisor who is awesome and I think there's like there's resources out there that everybody will find their like person or resource that they want to utilize mostly um, once they start medical school but I think for me that was the big thing that having someone that will listen to my complaints and also like help me figure out and navigate medical school was really really helpful for me. Yeah I agree with all of you guys. Uh, our, our advisor is pretty awesome and then I think a lot of times also as students are pretty supportive of each other like we'll text each other and be like just having a rough day and someone's like yeah me too honestly 
And so that kind of just gives you the sentiment that we're like supportive of each other. We're here for each other. We're not, we're not trying to step on each other to get to the top. We're really trying to build each other up as we move up. And so that's something that I really enjoy about the student culture here at Wayne. Okay. Um, another question. So what activities are students in BMA involved in at Wayne and et cetera? So I guess, um, I guess as an organization, some activities that we kind of put on through our organization. And so I was kind of discussed about the blood pressure cuff initiative. And so we're giving, we're giving patient education, we're providing patient education and then also blood pressure cuffs to community members. We just put on or piloted this specialty speaker series. And so we're gonna bring in black physicians from various specialties to kind of talk to our group about what it's like to be underrepresented in medicine once we're actually in the field after graduating. Um, and then I think we also have yearly, we have like a sister to sister or brother to brother kind of get together. And then David actually just put on a black men in medicine panel, I think last month. And so that was, that was a pretty cool chat that we did. Um, I forget anything else that we do as an organization. Um, there's there's a lot of opportunities with BMA to kind of network with other Black physicians in the community as well. So we had like an Opal event last year with people who are from all over, like in surgery and gen in primary care, general surge, whatever. Um, so we do we try our best to kind of facilitate you guys building relationships with mentors who you hope to you know kind of like model your career after um so that's another thing that we're also involved in um also not this year but uh previous years we've had um uh, surgical skills nights um where you get to like go out and practice your suturing and get taught by a surgeon at one of the hospitals that surround the area um we also have our um welcome boat uh party usually every year which is awesome for the entire school and we put that on, which is great. Um, just to like have more an inclusive environment for the entire school starting out. Uh, yeah, so we do all that and more. I think we are just, we just came, <laughs> all of us just came off of an exam a few days ago and then Ariel's best to take hers. And so we're kind of exhausted. So forgive us if we, you know, aren't quick to thinking right now. But Sarah, you had your hand raised. Yeah, I did. Um, firstly, thank you for putting this on. I really do appreciate it. Um, so my question for you is that I've read a lot about the some of the the leadership or the preparation at Wayne. So there are the courses like the the leadership and external affairs development or lead, and then the medical political action, MPAC, and public health leadership courses. Uh, and I just wanted to know, um, what are your thoughts? Are any of you guys uh, either on impact or lead? OK, yeah. so can I ask why you didn't take them? So I, oh, go ahead, Ariel. Oh, I was going to say, so there, there are a couple other electives that you can take as well. So I actually ended up taking the research elective okay. um, instead, which is why I didn't take it. But um, they both, they're both like good programs. It's, I think taking things on top of the course load in general is a little bit hectic. Um, so it really has to really align with what you're, what you're interested in. So for me, research was my number one, since I'm interested in a more competitive specialty at the end of the day. So I was let's focus on that and some people took more i prefer to take just the one um go ahead capricia yeah so like she said we had the option to choose between these co-curricular or elective programs that we can do on top of our curriculum and so i had chose community engagement because that's something that was most important to me of the options presented to us and so that would just that's just my reason why i didn't do that specific program that you were talking about but I do know people, um, one of our friends actually is in the impact program. And so we are working on kind of like this uh, medical resolution. 
And so she like brought a lot of information, a lot of experience to the table. And I was like, I, I have no idea where to start on this initiative. And she was like, oh, let me reach out to so-and-so because we do this thing and uh, we work with these people. And I was like, I didn't even know all of this existed. And so I think it's really beneficial in our separate curriculums or our separate electives and experiences that we take part in is that it kind of gives us um, these tools, like different tools, but these tools that we can utilize at different tables and kind of help each other out. I can also kind of talk about, I chose not to do an elective. Um, I can talk about why. Um, honestly, med school during a pandemic, starting med school during a pandemic is a lot. And I think it's okay to admit to yourself um, or to take it easy on yourself and admit to yourself that maybe you just want to focus on on academics and make sure that that's strong and make sure that you're doing well in your classes. I think that that's perfectly fine. Um, but I also think it's important to get involved. And so um, a lot of my classmates did choose to do electives, but I didn't. I just didn't feel like it was the right time for me personally. But I think it depends on each person. Um, the electives are great opportunities, but I mean, if it's something that's not for you and you just want to focus on school right now and making sure that's good, then then that's good too. Also, a lot of what um, Capricia was mentioning about learning these new skill sets, you can learn them through um, other clubs. Like I think AMA does uh, makes resolutions often, and um, there's a lot of like um, changes that are made to um, medical education just from the student level. Like I believe Pat, Step Becoming Pass Fail was a student initiative that was brought forth a few years ago. So like there's there's different things you can do without being part of the elective specifically. And those are all available at Wayne. Thank you for that and all of your answers and for sharing that. Um, I just, I also have to say that I love when you guys have been saying things like, you know, if you choose to come to Wayne, like I choose, and I think a lot of people here choose, just hopefully, you know, fingers crossed I get accepted. But yeah, I just had to say, I found it very funny. So thanks. Um, okay, so we do have another question in the chat. And then Marie also just posted a comment in response to um, the electives and impact curriculum. So if you wanted to take a look at that, Sarah. Okay, so what, what de-stressed activities are available for students after taking exams or just for networking? So de-stressed activities available to students after taking exams. So something that we really appreciate this year for the second years is that most of our, most if not all of our exams have so far have been on a Friday. And so we can kind of take Saturday, Sunday off. And then I think many of us choose to take the following like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off also. But the best thing, <laughs> the best thing, <laughs> maybe they don't take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, but, but I usually do. <laughs> Um, sorry, but the best thing about us having the exam on Friday is that we can kind of relax and have like a stress-free, guilt-free, you can kind of, you can either sit on the couch and watch TV all day and you don't have that sense of, I should be studying. It's just, let me just watch. I should be sitting here and making sure I click okay when Netflix says, are you still watching? Um, you could hang out with friends all day if you want. It's, it's, I really enjoy that time after the exam because it's, it's just like, well, I have nothing else to worry about. I'm just enjoying my time just being here. And so that's something that's very beneficial. And then throughout the year, um, we have a health and wellness uh, Senate committee. And so they put on these events. When we weren't in person, they would kind of bring, sometimes they uh, would bring in like Panera for us in the morning so that if we had an early morning at school. And so we'd get bagels and coffee or I know virtually they've been doing things like holding yoga sessions or they had a day where people would bring their pets on Zoom and people just kind of look at pets for a little bit. Uh, we have uh, one of the class counselors, she leads a meditation every few weeks. And so you can take part in that if you'd like. And so there's various health and wellness opportunities for students to take part in throughout the year. And then we also, if you like to work out or like to do fitness classes, there's also that at the undergrad gym. And so we have access to the undergrad gym here at Wayne. And so um, if that's something that you like to do, you can just go there whenever you want and take part in those. We have a rock climbing wall. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you need to de-stress, like there's a lot of stuff that you can do to de-stress. And you know, it's really important. I think it's so great that our curriculum um, with when we were in person and also virtual, 
is that you can do the lectures if you want to do the lectures if you want to stream all of them you can stream them if you want to go in person you can go in person when we were in person but i think the best thing is that it's kind of on your own time and so if you are like okay well let me make sure i get the material in at the beginning of the week and then take friday off or let me take this evening off and then I'll get back to the material tomorrow. I think that's a good thing because it's really, it's on your schedule of when you want to get the material as long as you just learn it by the exam. Do you guys have anything else to add? I'll also mention that, um, sorry, Kendall, but uh, the first year students, uh, last year we had PEP uh, after our exams, which are like post exam parties, and we would all be able to go out and they'd arrange for us to have cheaper cover at a bar or whatnot. And it was just a really nice time to like get to know our classmates and de-stress together. So I think that was like always the highlight of my Friday night after an exam. But um, you know, Caprice likes to sit on the couch and watch Netflix. That's fine. <laughs> Saturdays, but oh, Fridays, okay, okay. I sorry. Was <laughs> So That's hopefully, so good. Yeah. Hopefully, they bring that back soon for once. Uh, hopefully, there's a vaccine and we can all go out and enjoy each other's company in real life again. Um, but that was the main the main thing for me. Kendall, as a first year, how do you be stress? Uh, I'm on the couch too. It, it's been interesting coming into to med school in, in the midst of a pandemic because of the fact that we don't get to see our classmates as often. We don't get those opportunities as often to get to know each other. Um, and so I still cherish those weekends after exams because it, it is that time where you don't have to worry about what you need to do next. I'm supposed to be doing something. What is it? You know things like that. And so it, it is time to de-stress. So since, you know, since people aren't really supposed to be out like that, like I'm just on my couch. Um, so, but I am um, anxious and, and, and waiting for when we can start doing those uh, like parties after post exams and things like that. Um, so it's been a non-traditional experience, so to speak, but I mean, we're adapting to the situation, so. Yeah, all you can do is adapt. In terms of networking, um, the school puts on these luncheons or these these talks every few weeks. I don't know if they're weekly, but it's they put it on pretty often. And so they'll bring in a physician and you can, sometimes they do like a big webinar format and then sometimes they do smaller like coffee chats and even sometimes they facilitate like a one-on-one -on -one conversation between you and the physician. And so that's a pretty good networking opportunity that the school puts together for us students to get connected with physicians. And then also joining student organizations and um, taking part in being an active member because we, we as a student organization, and I know other student organizations bring in physicians also. So that's a way for you to get exposed to different physicians and different specialties. And then of course, after that initial connection is made through like a webinar, through an event that a student org puts together, you can go ahead and reach out to that physician and just be like, hey, like, I saw you talk and I'm really interested in this. Um, I either just want to do a chat or just want to put my name out there or maybe I can come shadow you a day. And so a lot of the physicians that we bring in are part of the Wayne community and they, they really do enjoy having students come and talk with them and they really do like to give back and kind of help us all out. So that's something that's beneficial to us students as far as networking. I think it, for me, it was a big change because being pre-med, I was like, I don't know any physicians. It's really hard to even shadow. I don't even know how to get my name out there. And then coming to med school, I think day one, we were hit with like all these shadowing opportunities and all these physicians came in and just talked with us throughout the year with different organizations. And so it's a really good opportunity that we have for networking. Just to um, piggyback off of that as well, sorry. Um, you can also, as a, as a medical student, it's so much easier, as she said, to get in contact with these physicians. Um, you could even dry, like cold call them and our cold, cold email. And you know, generally um, they're thinking, ooh, free labor if you want to do research or, and so, I mean, realistically, it's really, really easy to get contact with um, physicians once you're in medical school, which is really nice and a nice little shift from being a pre-med. And sorry, you can go, you can go ahead again, Capricia. Oh, no, that's good. I was just going to uh, say, Alfred, did you have your hand raised? Um, that is correct. Thank you very much for um, holding this event. Sorry, I arrived a late, so I may have missed some of the information that you talked about before. So I guess my general question that I have today um, is, you know, through undergrad and going to graduate studies, you know, some of the things that I really enjoy doing um, is mentoring students. 
So one of the things that I want to ask is, are there some activities that you've done, you know, maybe it be your uh, M1 year through M2, I'm not sure what the range of medical students are here today, that you've continued to do throughout you know, your medical studies? Is there something that you've done, that you used to do during undergrad that you've done, maybe in a greater you know, emphasis now that you have that uh, capability of being a medical student? Yes, that's my question. Thank you. Ariel and David, you both are SILs, right? Yeah. Um, in terms of mentorship, I'm also right there with you too. I really enjoy um, helping people along that process too. So um, if you want to be like an SIL is one of those ways that you can do that too, because you basically get to work one-on-one -on -one with um, students who need extra help, like M1s who might need extra help. Um, it gives you a chance to also go into the anatomy lab and kind of serve as an instructor, ask the students questions. Um, sometimes they just need to vent to you. Um, what else is there in terms in terms of like mentorship you can also do a lot of that outside of school too like i i help out a lot of my friends back in canada who are trying to also get into medical school um and you can kind of just like continue that um mentorship track on your own because like once you're a medical student you kind of have the clout to actually talk a little bit um whereas when you're an undergrad like at least when i was an undergrad i wasn't telling people anything because i didn't know <laughs> i wasn't in yet right so um right. There's definitely a lot of opportunities for you to continue like the mentorship and, and kind of like helping people along that way. There's also like even outside of medical um, mentorship, we also, David and I both did a, this thing called Fit Kids where we actually um, did act, mentored uh, school aid, like grade school children um, on getting healthy and um, leading healthier lives. And, uh, you know, like we have, there's lots of opportunities within the community for mentorship as well. You can mentor pre-meds. Um, through BMA, we also all mentor a uh, first year M1 student as well. Um, we get mentored by physicians. So like there's, there's lots of different opportunities and different levels of mentorship along the way. Yeah, that sounds very wonderful. Cause I mean, one of the big things, I mean, that you've reiterated and what I've heard from my own individual research is the ability to you know, get involved in the community. So, you know, fit kids or being able to, you know, help students who you know where we're in, in your shoes, you know, and previously is something that seems really exciting. Thank you. All okay, right, so um, on to the next question. So at Capri Shot, myself, could you tell us more about the work of your social justice committee? And so it's called the Social Justice Medical Education Committee. And so we just recently created this group. And so one of our object objectives, major objectives, is trying to figure out what changes us students would like to see in the curriculum in terms of making it a more inclusive and diverse curriculum. Um, and so that's mostly what we do is try to see what changes can be implemented and then meet with the deans, meet with the administrators, administrators to kind of tell them, okay, we think this would be very beneficial here. We think this would be easily implemented here. This is what the students are saying. This is what the students want. How can we work with you guys to kind of get this change happen over the next few years? So in short term, it just, that's really what it is. And then at Kendall, what aspects of Lane's clinical learning do you like most? Um, yeah, so I mean, clinical skills for me uh, started a little bit different than it would have started in years past because of COVID. And so we started with virtual telehealth visits um, and you get a standardized patient and usually the case is um, relating to what you're learning. So um, when we were in our cardio, uh, cardiopulmonary unit, it was a, a a patient who came in with chest pain. Um, so now that we're sort of transitioning into in-person experiences, this was kind of the first time where I really felt like I was a physician in training. I mean, learning how to use my stethoscope, learning how to take blood pressure, learning how to you know listen to heart sounds and things like that. It, it's it's something that really makes you feel like you're learning something um, that you're going to take outside of the classroom. I mean, it's easy to to watch the lectures and things like that, which is great. Um, but then having to integrate that into um, like your practice and, and how you're interacting with patients and, and, um, and trying to assess a situation and, and figure out what's going on with the patient and why they're coming in. So there's just so many aspects that's enjoyable about it, but it's definitely been one of the experiences that I felt like has hit the most home for me in terms of um, wanting to be a physician. Um, so it's been really, really cool. Yeah, and usually 
I mean, it's unfortunate this year because of the pandemic, but usually as first year students, we um, were able to work in the free clinics, the student ran free clinics. And so we can practice these clinical skills pretty early on, like the first one or two months of starting our medical, medical education, we can work in the student free clinics and we can do these basic healthcare skills like taking blood pressure and listening to heart sounds, um, providing patient education on how to lower your blood glucose or um, the signs of being hypertensive. And so it's a really good opportunity that we have the students to work in these student ran free clinics. And I don't know how many we have now, but I think when I started, we had about 17. I think we have maybe a little more than that now. And so there's opportunity for everybody to work with the community and to also practice your clinical skills during your first one, uh, your first and second year of medical school. And so we have just about a few minutes, so uh, we can I'll briefly just summarize because um, Ron says he's been in and out of traffic, so he's been in and out of meetings, so we may have answered this already, but what are teaching opportunities or electives for medical students? Um, so as a first year and a second year student, you can, you can elect to participate in these electives, and so I think they had called them co-curricular before, and that's kind of what they are, and um, there is one for political advocacy, there's one for community engagement, there's one for research. And then I think there's another one, but I can't remember, but it's a longitudinal curriculum that you can take part in your entire first and second year, or just first or just second year. And so it kind of just gives you an additional education to um, these community topics that you would want to learn about and you may not have the opportunity to learn about in our standard curriculum. So he also said, I heard about an organization about sports medicine. So David, that might be a question for you to answer about maybe a sports med interest group. Yeah, um, so yeah, I'm one of the coordinators for the sports med in, um, interest group. So our experience has been great so far. We've, um, I did it, I went as an M1 last year to the events um, and basically you're just introduced to sports medicine um, from a variety of, I guess, View, uh, fields because there's like orthopedic surgery, sports medicine, there's primary care sports medicine, um, and there's different um, specialties you can take to get into it. So it's been cool being able to kind of interact with other physicians um, who are obviously sports med doctors. And you get, we also try to provide you guys opportunities to go and shadow. So like last year I went and I was able to shadow like the Detroit Pistons doctor and like work with him one-on-one -on -one and kind of spend a day with him and things like that. So COVID kind of messed all that up this year, but those networks and those relationships are still there and we're going to give you guys leave that contact information for the upcoming class was interested. Um, for Aaron, does BMA participate in activities with other like basically professional schools? So yes, that's one of our jobs because I'm one of the, like I said, black student organization representatives and one of our goals was to try to facilitate more events with these other groups. COVID threw a wrench in that as well, but like it, ideally what we would be trying to do is set up um, kind of networking events with the law school, the business school, um, and that was the plan for this year. Um, so we do have the intention to, to, to do that, and I hopefully you guys can kind of carry that on. We can leave you guys the network and the foundation to, to kind of get that going in the future. Yes, thanks for that. Um, do you guys have any other questions in the last minute? burning questions that you, you have? I guess I have one more question, but I guess it's not. Yeah, it's one more question. Would there be any way to uh, contact any of you like via email or anything, if you don't mind sharing that? Oh, yes, sorry. Um, if you guys are comfortable, if you wanna drop your contact info in the chat, I'll drop mine also. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, a few of us dropped it, so. But yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if you guys have any questions, we could take a last question, but if not, I guess you guys are free to go. Enjoy your evening. Make Thank sure you, you all. Vote. Thank you. Bye, guys.